Welcome to the Tree House. I am your host, Kelsey, and I am so excited that you are here with me today because we have a very special episode of the Tree House. And the reason that this episode is so, so special is because we are going to be celebrating some holidays. And we have three special holidays that we are going to be celebrating and learning about together. We're going to be learning about Christmas, Hanukkah, and Kwanzaa. And I am so excited to get started and explore these holidays together with you. So if you are ready, let's go ahead and get started. All right, everyone, I am so happy to have you back for our sign of the day. Now, what's going to make our signs of the day so special this episode is we're learning a lot of holiday signs. So to kick it off, we're going to learn the sign for holiday. That's right. So we are going to need both of our hands for this sign, and they're going to do the same exact thing, and it makes it super easy. I love when we have signs like that. So we're gonna take both of our hands and they're going to make the L shape. And just like our sign for animal, we are going to take our hands and move them towards our chest. And we're gonna fan out our fingers and they're going to move back and forth, kind of like they're dancing. I know I like to dance when I go to holiday parties and move them back and forth. Holiday, do you wanna try it with me? Perfect, I knew I invited the right person to celebrate the holidays with me. So move your hands back and forth. Holiday. Now during the holiday season, we celebrate lots of holidays. So we're going to learn about a couple holidays today. So, holiday. Very nice. Are you ready for our second sign of the day? Perfect. Now, we just learned the sign for holiday. And during the holiday Christmas, there's a very jolly man who comes to people's houses to deliver presents and spread joy for everyone. Now his name is Santa, and Christmas begins with the letter C. Now this is how we sign the letter C in sign language. We make the shape of the C with the sign that we, or the hand that we use to color with or draw with. So this is the letter C in sign language. So we bring our C to our chin. Now Santa Claus is known for his big white beard, right? We need to make that big white beard on our chin too. So we take our C and bring it down to our chest. Will you like to do that with me? Perfect. Now bring our C to our chin and down make that big beard. Ooh, you look like Santa. You wanna do it with me? One more time, Big Beard. Good job, and we're Saint Nick. Now, one thing I know about Santa Claus is he likes to eat, you guessed it, cookies. This time we need both of our hands, but they're going to be doing different things. So we need the hand we don't use to write or draw with to lay flat. This is going to be our plate. It's going to hold our delicious cookies. And this hand is going to be, that's right, our cookie. Now our cookies are usually round, so we're going to use it as our claw, our cookie. And we're going to bring back our plate, and our cookie is going to kind of dance around. We're going to go back and forth, and this is our sign for cookie. You want to try it with me? All right, hands at our side. Bring them up. Cookie. Very good, that's right cookies. You want to try it one more time with me? All right, hands at our side, bring them up, and cookie. Very good. So our fourth sign is snow. So we need both of our hands again. And you just saw how I wiggled my fingers back and forth. Can you try that? Ooh, very good. Our fingers are starting to dance, kind of like how the snow dances when it moves down. That is how the snow falls, and that's exactly how we're going to sign snow. It's when the snow starts to dance its way down, 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 down. You wanna try it with me? That's right, this is the sign for snow. It's dancing through the air, down to the ground. Snow. I love watching the snow make its way down. It's 
very graceful and beautiful snow. Our last sign is one of my favorite things in the entire world to do, and it's movies. I love to watch movies, and my favorite time to watch movies is, you guessed it, when it's really cold and I can't go outside and play. We just talked about how I don't like the cold. I like to stay inside in the warm, where it's warm and toasty and I get to snuggle up in my blanket and maybe watch some movies and eat some popcorn. So our next sign is movies. So we need both of our hands again. This hand is going to stand right like this. Can you do that? Where it's going to lay flat like this. And our next hand is going to go kind of like this, like a peacock feather. And it's going to move back and forth like this, like it's dancing for us. Like it's a little movie show, like a puppet. And this is the sign for movie. We're gonna try this together. You wanna help me? Perfect. Now our hand is gonna go out like this, lay it flat. We need our little puppet show to come out. Here it goes, movie. What's your favorite to move, movie to watch during the holidays? Do you have a favorite holiday movie? Mine is A Christmas Story. I'm so happy they play it 24 hours because I think I could watch it for 24 hours straight. How about you? Do you think you could watch a movie for 24 hours straight? You could? Whew. Me too. You're really good at signing and I'm so happy that you came back to sign with me. Keep practicing and I will see you next time, okay? Everyone, what's your favorite part of Christmas? Mine is driving around and seeing all the sparkling lights in the community. Every year, Parks and Rec has a contest for Christmas decorations and we went around the community to see what we could find. If you want to see more lights, check out our Christmas light show on Shelby TV. Today we made sugar cookies and we add um, butter and powdered sugar together and we cream that up together. Then we add some vanilla and an egg and we mix that up together to get it all nice and creamy. And then we add some more stuff like flour and some other baking products in there, um, including baking soda and cream of tartar. A lot of people call these cookies cream of tartar cookies or sugar cookies, same thing. We start with that batter and then we take it out of the bowl and then we put it, um, wrap it up real tight and put it in the fridge for a couple hours typically. By doing that, you're allowing everything to, to come together and then your cookies won't spread when they bake as long as you bake them when they're cold. So then we took that batter, we took some out and um, out with a cookie scoop and rolled those in our sanding sugar. And then we also rolled them out with a rolling pin um, about, I would say, a quarter to a half inch thick and um, used our cookie cutters, our snowman and our Christmas tree and cut those out, put them on our baking tray and then sprinkled some fun sanding sugar on them for the holidays.
So this year, um, we will be offering many different Christmas cookies, such as red velvet, caramel shortbread, peanut butter blossoms, some sugar cookies as well. Um, we're gonna be doing grab and go platters. You can pre-order the platters. We will have those all in our case on a regular basis as well. So you can order our cookies directly on our website at www.thebakehousemi.com or you can give us a call at 586-262-4548 and place your order that way. We also offer curbside pickup right outside our side door or you can come on into the shop and place your order as well. So for the month of December, we get to celebrate the holiday season. And we've talked a lot about Christmas. Now we get to talk about two other holidays that take place in the month of December. Now if you don't know what those holidays are, that's okay. I am bringing in some friends to talk about those holidays for us. I am so excited that we get to explore those holidays with our friends. Let's go ahead and check them out. Well, Hanukkah. <laughs> Jewish Day Winter Time Festival of Life. Okay, and they we celebrate a nightly menorah light. And this is a menorah. You can see the candles will go in here. Okay, very festive, uh, special prayers, and you know a lot of fried food. <laughs> No keto. Okay. So, and when it started was the second century BC, because at that time, Syrian Greeks, as you said, tried to force all the people of Israel to accept Greek culture. So instead of the belief in one God, now they had a plethora of gods. So a small band armed, poorly armed Jews, got together, led by Judah Maccabee, and they defeated one of the, at the time, one of the greatest armies on earth. And they drove the Greeks from the land, and they reclaimed the Holy Temple. Hanukkah means dedication. So, they wanted to rededicate it as a service of God, so what they did was notice that eternal light was out, like no oil for it to burn. So they found one little cast, little thing of oil, something that would have lasted for one day. But the miracle is it lasted for eight days, okay? And that was enough time to get more purified oil. As for the fried food, because of and oil. Well, yeah. in, in America, we use potato pancakes. That's called latkes. In okay. Israel, we use donut. That's the original idea. And donut in Hebrew called sufganiyo. Sufganiyo. That's, that's the two traditions. Now, remember, traditions are not rules from the Bible. They're all traditional rules, including the entire holiday of Hanukkah. It's a traditional holiday, not a biblical holiday. Right. You know, my kids like to play the dreidel game, little kids playing dreidel. I love how it all just comes together because you're talking about the oil, how much you use the oil. The oil comes from, of course, um, it lasting the eight nights, um, but also how you cook with the oil as a way to celebrate. And then you have the menorah where you light the candle to celebrate the oil too. So it's really wrapped in, um, it's a beautiful tradition. Kwanzaa is a wonderful, awesome holiday. It covers seven principles over seven days when we celebrate it at the end of the year from December 26th through January 1st. Um, and there's a lot more that I can tell you about. The principles and the symbols, there are seven of each principles and then seven uh, symbols. And the symbols, when we celebrate, we put our table together and it looks a lot like this. It doesn't have to be this exactly, this is just one way we can set up our tables, but the symbols of Kwanzaa should be there. Principles are important ideas that make us think this is how we want to be. We think it's important, so we want to, to do these things. 
want to be uh, a person with unity. Umoja is the first principle. Unity, we want to have unity in our family. We want to use, for example, another principle, Nia or purpose. We have a purpose, this is what we're doing. So principles help us understand what we're doing, how we do it, and then why we're doing the thing. Red and black and green, you'll see commonly connected to things that are from the continent of Africa, of the people of the continent of Africa. It's to represent the, the blood of the people, the skin of the people, the black people, and then the land, the greenness, the verdant, and the, and the wonderfulness of their, uh, the world that they have, the, the ability, the, uh, the fertility of their communities, as well as the land itself. The candles do represent the symbols of the principles when we light them up. So we light one candle for each principle every day. So we take one day to celebrate one principle, and at the end of the week, we have celebrated all of the principles and we begin to think of the year because that's the end of the principles. The last principle is on the first day of the year. So begin the new year with this wonderful idea of how we celebrated all of these things that are important to us. And we begin this new year on January 1st again, remembering and reliving how they are important to us. Well, there are many different ways to celebrate Kwanzaa. Um, each family has their own tradition. Um, one of the best things that we can do is to have our kinara, which is the candle holder, and light the candle. We talk about the meaning of that principle, and people could even share how they feel about that principle. Why is that principle important to them? There might be a story that is told, a song that is sung, to remind us about that principle. There are all these different ways that people in their families and in their communities, their churches, their schools, can celebrate Kwanzaa. Just like a lot of people don't celebrate Christmas without a Christmas tree, you don't really celebrate Kwanzaa without the symbols of Kwanzaa. And the table is where you place those symbols. Everybody can celebrate Kwanzaa. It is, a, his, a, it is historically people of African descent who celebrate it, but it must be important to say, for me, it was founded by a person from the United States of America, so it is a holiday celebrated in the United States. It is beginning to be celebrated over the past 50 years of its being celebrated. It's growing, so people across the world are starting to celebrate it, but it started right here in the U.S., in California, actually, by Dr. Maulanga Karenga. He was the founder, he is the founder of Kwanzaa, and so everybody can celebrate it. People of African descent are the first ones to celebrate it because it was started in the African community, in the black community here in the U.S., but everybody can. You don't have to be black to celebrate Kwanzaa. You have to believe in the principles. You have to want to bring those principles into your life, into your heart, into your family, and into your world. That is who celebrates Kwanzaa. Wow, Kwanzaa and Hanukkah were amazing to learn about, and I'm so excited that our new friends were here to teach us all about them. That is the amazing part about learning new things and meeting new people. They share their traditions and their stories with us, and I'm so happy you were here with me today to learn all about them. Now, if you want to learn more about Hanukkah or Kwanzaa, make sure that you check out pbskids.org for fun coloring pages or even fun activities. You can also check out Shelby TV Kids for our holiday movie review. It's that time of year again. You could drop off your letter to Santa in the Santa mailbox at the Shelby Township Library. Santa's elves will make sure you get a return letter from the big man himself. For any questions, contact the Shelby Macomb Daybreakers Qantas or the Shelby Township Library. <laughs> A big hello to all the children in Shelby Township. Welcome to Storytime with Santa and Mrs. Claus. 
Well, we closets just love to come to Shelby Township, don't we, Santa? It is one of our favorite places. What book do you have for us today, Santa? I am reading The Perfect Christmas by Eileen Spinelli. Abigail Archer's family is perfect as can be. They drive into the countryside and chop down their Christmas tree. Our tree is artificial, completely out of shape, with several branches missing and one held on with tape. Abigail Archer's mother hangs holly in the halls, lights candles on the mantel, fills bowls with silver balls. My mom decorates with things she finds in bargain bins, macaroni reindeer, and dented fruitcake tins. <laughs> Abigail Archer's grandmother bakes elegant Christmas treats, a three-tiered tray of gingerbread and tart and other sweets. My grandmother's Christmas cookies could bounce to Mexico. One fell from grandma's cookie pan and broke my uncle's toe. Oh, oh no. Abigail Archer's poodle eats lamb chops from a mat that's stitched with Merry Christmas. He wears a Santa hat. Our dogs have horrid manners. They dig through the trash for fun. They slobber on my snow boots. They drunk, jump on everyone. Hmm. On Christmas Eve at Abigail's, their relatives come in cars, chauffeur-driven glamorous clothes. They look like movie stars. My relatives come in pickup trucks. They clatter up the walk. They ho, ho, ho and jingle bell. They shout instead of talk. Ho, 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 ho. Abigail and their cousins get gifts like queens and kings, china tea sets, fancy bikes, kaleidoscopes, and rings. We get flannel PJs, a doll or teddy bear, a soccer ball, some candy canes, and lots of underwear. Abigail plays the cello to entertain their guests, some classic Christmas pieces. She even takes requests. My father juggles grapefruit while I play the kazoo. Then Aunt Claressa sings off key. That's entertainment too. Then suddenly it's snowing. We can't believe our eyes. We grab our coats. We head out the door. And ah, what a sweet surprise. The archers hurry outside too. A wash and street lamp glow. Our families are all together laughing and dancing through the snow. Merry Christmas. Ho, 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 ho. That story really was the perfect Christmas. It's amazing how two families from such separate cultures could get together and they realize that they're very similar together after all. I would have loved to have gone to either one of those Christmas parties. They seemed very fun. And what story do you have for us today, Mrs. Claus? And today we have for you one of Santa's favorite books about getting into the Christmas spirit, Merry Christmas, Little Elliot by Mike Curato. Little Elliot was not excited about Christmas. Let's go see Santa, said Little Mouse. I want a toy train, said Mouse. In line, Elliot thought about what he wanted. Can you give me the Christmas spirit, Elliot asked Santa. I'm afraid I can't give that to you, said Santa. You have to find that yourself. How do I find the Christmas spirit, asked Elliot. I don't know, said Mouse but I will help you look. That's a good friend. Elliot and Mouse looked for the Christmas spirit at a show. They went to see a beautiful tree. They even went sledding in the park. One of my favorite things to do at Christmas. Have you found the Christmas spirit yet, said Mouse. No, said Elliot, not yet. What's a letter on his forehead? Oh dear, said Elliot. It says, to Santa, 
the North Pole. We need to deliver this right away. The two friends rushed back, but the line was long gone, and so was Santa. Oh dear. Elliot opened the letter. I wish we could help, he said. He thought for a moment about what he should do. Oh, looks like they got in the car. Let's go, Elliot said. Elliot and Mouse drove through the night. Finally, they arrived. Merry Christmas, said Elliot and Mouse. We got your letter, said Mouse, and we're here to deliver your gift. Turns out the letter says, Dear Chris Santa, for Christmas, I would like some good friends. Love, Noel S. At last, Elliot had found his Christmas spirit. Now don't you lose your Christmas spirit. Ho, 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 ho. That's not a problem here in Shelby Township. The Christmas spirit here is just overflowing. And wasn't it nice of Shelby TV to invite us here today? For it was. Story time was absolutely amazing. And we want to wish everybody here in Shelby Township, as well as all of Macomb County, the very merriest of Christmas. Ho, 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 ho. Hi everyone, I'm Brenna, and I'm so excited for Christmas. My favorite way to celebrate Christmas is to snuggle up on the couch with a hot mug of cocoa and watch my favorite Christmas movies. So today, I'm going to share my top five favorite Christmas movies with all of you. So, my fifth favorite Christmas movie is Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. This film is about Rudolph, who, when he was young, was made fun of for his bright, shiny nose. With the help from some unlikely friends, Rudolph discovers that the thing that makes him different from all the other reindeers also makes him unique and special. He becomes Santa's main reindeer and leads the way on a dark and stormy Christmas night. There's a few other movies that I love that are really similar to this one, including A Year Without Santa Claus and Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Now, my fourth favorite Christmas movie is Jingle Jangle. Jingle Jangle is an exciting movie musical about a toy maker who was once betrayed by his apprentice who stole his idea. Years later, the toy maker is visited by his granddaughter, Journey, who sets off on an adventure to show the world that those brilliant ideas were once her grandfather's. Now, I love this movie because they're singing and dancing. Do you love to sing and dance as well? Now, let me see your moves. Now, my third favorite Christmas movie is How the Grinch Stole Christmas. This movie centers the mean old Grinch who decides to ruin Christmas for all the people living in Whoville. He sneaks into town and he begins to steal anything Christmas related. However, his plans are interrupted when he meets the adorable Cindy Lou Who. I think the Grinch is so funny. Is this movie one of your favorite Christmas movies as well? Now, my second favorite Christmas movie is Elf. Elf centers Buddy, a human who was raised in the North Pole amongst elves. When Buddy realizes he doesn't belong, he travels to New York City to find his father. Now, my favorite part of this movie is when Buddy discovers New York City for the first time. He jumps on the crosswalk and he gets stuck in revolving doors. I laughed so hard when I saw this for the first time. Now, before we get to my favorite Christmas movie ever, here's a few honorable mentions. Home Alone, Polar Express, Nightmare Before Christmas, and Mickey's Christmas Carol. Are any of these movies your favorite? Now, it's finally time for my favorite Christmas movie ever. Can you guess what it is? Drum roll, please. It's the Santa Claus. This movie is about Scott, who accidentally kills Santa on Christmas. Scott and his son travel to the North Pole, where he's told that he has to take over for Santa by the next Christmas. I love this movie because it's funny and it's exciting. 
My favorite part is when Scott's beard keeps growing back no matter how much he shaves it. This is when he realizes that he's starting to become Santa Claus. Thank you so much for joining me and listening to all of my favorite Christmas movies. I hope you have a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. See you soon. Bye. This year we had our annual Christmas Aglow featuring our children's coloring contest. Children around the community sent in their own unique gingerbread men in hopes to give Santa the key to the township. The top three drawings were sworn in and got to meet the big man himself. Let's go take a look. kids, are you guys ready to give the key to the city to Santa Claus? Yes. All right, let's do it. All right. Okay. Look at that. Thank Woo! you very much. This is a great honor for me. You guys are the best. <laughs> Good job, you guys. Now I have one more job for you guys to do, and we have to light the tree together. Do you think you can help me count from 10 to 1? Yes, okay. All right, so let's start with 10. Are you ready? Okay. 10, 10 9, 8, 8 7, 6, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Light that tree! Woo! Good job, you guys. All right, everyone, I am so happy you are here with me to make a lovely Christmas craft. And I can't think of anyone to make a craft with but you. So I am happy that you are here to join me today. Now we need a couple supplies in order to make this craft. And today we are going to be making a Christmas stocking. Now, if you haven't made one before, that's okay because I'm going to be giving you each step that we are going to do along the way. So that's okay if you don't know what we're doing. It takes a couple people in order to do this. And it's a good thing that I have my favorite partner, which is you to help me. So. I need a handy dandy pencil for some tracing, a marker, any color will do, some red construction paper, which will be the color of our stocking. Now if you don't have a red, con or red construction paper, that's okay. Maybe you like blue, green, purple, whatever floats your boat, and red construction paper as well, or white. <laughs> We're also going to have some glue to glue the papers together, some scissors for some cutting, and that's it. It's a really simple one. So I'm glad you're here to help. Now we need to start off with our first step. Our first step is to trace our stocking. Now stocking is just a fancy word for a sock. Now you've probably seen a sock before. You wear them on your feet. Now we have to draw a pretty big sock because this sock is something that Santa Claus actually puts stuff in. Now you probably have heard of a stocking before. That's what we hang on a hot, like a fireplace, right? So our sock, we are going to start with a line on top. 
just like how I drew it. Now we're going to have a line going down and our line at the end is going to do a curve. So kind of like a circle when a circle curves, Ooh, just like that. And then we're going to do another curve, Ooh, just like this. And you see how it's starting to look like a sock? And hopefully it's a clean sock and not a stinky sock. We wouldn't want any stinky socks here because we want Santa to put some good things into our stocking, not coal. We wanna make sure we're being good all year long, right? Now, our next step is to cut. This might not be a step that you can do yourself. You might need a grown-up's help and that's okay. So make sure you have permission before you pick up the scissors and start cutting yourself. Now, I have your help, so I can do it myself. So we're going to cut along the lines that we just drew. So I'm gonna use the lines to cut alongside. So we're gonna cut out our beautiful non-stinky sock. You guys did a good job helping me draw this sock. Cut alongside. Oh, good job. Along this curve. Ooh, and one more snip, watch your fingers and voila, all cut. Now we have our sock. Okay, now that we've cut out our sock, now it's time to use our white construction paper to draw our top of our stocking. Now usually on the top of our stocking, we have a white piece of fabric and usually it has the name of whoever's stocking it belongs to. So we need that part. So we are going to draw a white oval, okay? Just like we traced out our stocking or sock on our red construction paper, now we're going to do the same thing and do an oval or a cloud. Do you wanna try it with me? I knew I could trust you. I invited the right person to this craft time. All right, here we go. And remember, nice curves, perfect. Now I need my handy dandy, you guessed it, scissors. And remember, if you didn't cut it the first time, we need that same grown up to help us again. So we're going to cut out our nice cloud. And we're gonna cut it out. And remember, watch those fingers. And cut along the lines. Perfect. Now we've got the top of our stocking. All right, now it's time for us to use our handy dandy glue stick to glue down our nice white cloud we cut out. So we are going to put this right on top of our stocking we cut out. Now remember, I said that this is going to be where we put our name later on. So we need to glue this piece on top of our sock. So all we need to do is just put a little bit of glue right along the edge of our sock. Do you think you can help me do that? Perfect. So all we need is one nice, thick, line of glue and we want to make sure we're putting plenty of glue down so that our nice fluffy white cloud doesn't float away. So we're going to put them right there and we're going to press, press, press. Do you think you can press really hard? You try. Oh, good press. I think you've been working out a lot. Oh, good job. And we did it. Fantastic work. Okay, now it's time for our last step, and it's to write our name on our stocking that we've made. So I'm going to put my name right on top of our white fluffy cloud that we've just glued on. This is where you can write your name too, or maybe you're making your stocking for someone else. 
Maybe you can put the name of a friend or a grandparent on there and mail it to them. I'm going to put my name right on top. So I'm gonna put a K, and then an E, L, S, E, Y for Kelsey. Do you know how to spell your name? You do? Isn't it amazing when you learn how to spell your name? Spelling is so cool. And voila, we have made our very own Christmas stocking. And you can make one of your very own too. Just ask for some help from your family and you can make one. Have a happy and safe and wonderful holiday. This year has been a little bit different and that can make it a little bit difficult for us to get into the holiday spirit. And what I mean by that is, well, you might not feel really into getting ready for Christmas and you may not know how. Now that's why as a community, we're getting together to, you guess it, celebrate Christmas. Now what we can do is on Christmas Eve at exactly 6 p.m., go outside while we are putting together our reindeer food and get out some bells. And we are going to ring our bells for approximately two minutes. So at 6 p.m., go outside and ring a bell for two minutes. And that's going to ring in Santa Claus. So Santa Claus needs our help to help him fly so he can help find you and everyone else in the community. I like presents and I think you do too. And Santa can't find our houses without our help. And I know he likes to bring in the Christmas cheer. So he needs our help to do that. So we need to join as a community and ring those bells for two minutes on Christmas Eve at 6 p.m. So join me and everyone else. I hope to see you then and to hear you ringing your bells. 2020 was a strange year, but we're coming to the end of this year. And usually when we come to the end of a year, we do something called a New Year's resolution. And you may not know what that is. And you may have heard people mention that they're starting to set a New Year's resolution or a goal for themselves. And you may be thinking, should I set one for myself too? Well, guess what? We can set one together. And I'll explain to you what a New Year's resolution is. Well, as we head into the new year, which is 2021, on January 1st, people like to set a resolution, which is a goal. That means we want to change we want to get better at something. So a goal like we want to set for ourselves is an improvement. So a resolution is something we want to improve on next year. So in 2021, we want to get better at something. Maybe that is being nicer to a friend. Maybe it's getting a better grade on a subject you maybe don't do so well at in school. Maybe math you struggle on, so you're going to maybe do five problems each day so that you get better at it. Whatever that goal is, it might be different for each person. A resolution is something that you set up for yourself. So each person's resolution is going to be a little bit different. So you are going to set up one for yourself and I'll set up one for myself too. So an example of a New Year's resolution I'm going to set up for the treehouse is making sure that next year I'm going to make the show even more educational. That means that I'm going to be teaching you guys some new things next year that I haven't taught you this year. Maybe some new signs or some new crafts. We're going to make sure that we are going to be learning some fun things together next year. Now these resolutions or goals can be really big or small. We can make them very challenging or just some things that can be obtainable. So that means not too challenging. Our resolutions are, can be things that we can do with our parents too. We don't have to do them alone. Also, our resolutions can be things that we can, can come up with with our parents too. So if you need some help, definitely ask your parents for help. A great way for us to keep track of our resolutions is to also write them down. So if you want to hang them up on a mirror or put them on your nightstand, that's a good idea too. 
So remember, a New Year's resolution is just a goal that you're going to set for yourself next year. So ask for help with a family or a grown up or maybe a best friend and set up those goals. And I'll see you next year. All right, everyone, I know this is my favorite part of this show, and it might be yours too. This is where we get to take a look at all of the artwork you have sent in. You guys are the most amazing artists I have ever seen, so I'm so excited to take a look at what you like to do to celebrate for the holidays. That's right, we asked you last episode to send in your drawings of how you celebrate the holiday season. So let's go take a look at how all of our viewers celebrate the holidays. Making spirits bright, what fun it is to ride and sing the same song tonight. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Dashing through the snow in a one horse open sleigh or the fields we go. Thank you so much for celebrating all the holidays with me today. I don't think I would want to celebrate the holidays with anyone else but you. Now have a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays. Now I will see you next year and remember to send in your drawings of however you like to celebrate winter. If that means making a gingerbread man or a snow person, or throwing a big snowball at your brother, whatever you enjoy doing during the winter. Ooh, even sledding, or making hot chocolate, because I know I do not like the cold. Whatever it may be, I want you to send that drawing in to me, because I look forward to spending next year with you. So until then, happy holidays. See you next time. Bye-bye.